10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 246. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 246 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. As always, I hope you are doing well out there and hope you're ready to get into something new here. So we are doing our tune of the month, but we are going to keep it on topic and we are going to talk about some of the elements from Charlie Parker's playing that we've been discussing that I have included in this week's tune of the month and we have written it over one of my favorite Charlie Parker compositions, Donna Lee. So before we get into the show, as always, I have a few people to give a shout out to that have just joined our Patreon. If you're not sure what Patreon is, it is a way to support creators that you enjoy, that you follow directly, and that is how this show is funded. So if you want to find out what you get for rewards over at Patreon, you do get a PDF to every episode and some other fantastic benefits like discounts on some of our products, all for a very, very low monthly price. So we've got some brand new people over here. First, I'd like to thank the new $3 patrons. Thank you to Neil and Christopher. And then we've got some brand new $5 patrons. Thank you to George and Al. Albert. And then we also have two people that have edited their $3 pledge up to $5. And we really appreciate that. Juan Chai and Glenn and Carol. Thank you guys so much for the support. And as always, thank you to everybody that has chosen to support us. So if you want to find our Patreon page and get yourself signed up, get those benefits, go over to 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners and get yourself signed up today. You get instant access to all of that. All right, let's talk about this etude. So as I mentioned, we are using the chords from one of my favorite Charlie Parker compositions, Donna Lee. And I actually think it's important to note because this is a great jazz tradition that Charlie Parker championed. This tune, the chord progression to this tune, actually belongs to another song from 1917 called Back Home Again in Indiana. So these are the same chord changes and Donna Lee is actually what you would call a contrafact. Now, Charlie Parker did this a lot in his composition style. I mean, if you look at the tune Ornithology, that is actually written over How High the Moon. So this is kind of an important thing where Charlie Parker would refresh the melodic content of a chord progression that was actually already written and put his own spin on it. And this is a great tradition in jazz. You will find this. Now, if you think about rhythm changes, that's actually what rhythm changes are. It is originally, you know, I Got Rhythm by George Gershwin. And musicians over the years have written hundreds and probably thousands of contrafacts over that. So this tune, if you learn Donna Lee, you should also go back and learn the melody to Indiana. Now, Indiana is a lot simpler than the melody to Donna Lee, which is very, very complicated, but I think it's really important to know both. All right, so that was a bit of an aside, but I just wanted to mention that. But I think these changes perfectly typify uh, the, the type of changes that Charlie Parker really excelled on. You know, he really, his style really lends itself to chord changes like this. They make sense. And these chords really lend themselves to a lot of the things that we have talked about this month. So if you don't know Donna Lee, this would be a perfect opportunity to learn it. And you will have that etude as an example of how to approach soloing over this if you want to get a lot of those bebop sounds that we've talked about this month. So let's review real quick the concepts that we have talked about this month. Our first episode of the month was all about connecting chords by way of a half step. So having that really nice voice leading in between the chords or even sometimes on the same chord, but going from the and of two to beat three or the and of four to beat one. Those are the really, really crucial points in your playing where you want to have really good voice leading. Now, the second episode this month was all about the 
texture of the line and horizontal versus vertical playing and the way that Charlie Parker really demonstrates he can switch back and forth between those giving his solo a really really interesting texture and never letting you predict where he's going to go he's always surprising and delighting you which is a thing that we want to do in our solos now, the third episode from this month was all about his rhythmic diversity in his solos, the way he fit so many different types and lengths of notes into these phrases, and he did it so seamlessly. That is really something we should shoot for. Remember, rhythm is really king uh, in your phrasing. You know, you could be playing the most interesting notes in the world, but if you never consider the rhythmic value of what you're playing and try to make that as interesting as possible, that harmonic interest really loses a lot of its effect if it's not wrapped in a great sense of rhythm. So I have tried to sort of pack this etude with a bunch of those concepts that we've talked about this week. And on the previous worksheets from the last three episodes, I did some things where I highlighted, you know, certain parts of the phrases just to really point them out to you. In the etude, I did not do that. So you're going to have to do a little bit of detective work on your own. You're really going to have to dig through this and try to find those concepts. And this could be a really great way to put a cap on this month is for you to go through and actually find those different elements that we talked about and be confident in the fact that you know what's going on. So this is going to require a lot of analysis. And what you should do is you should learn the etude first, be able to play through it. You get a much better idea for it. Then you can go back and do a little bit more of that analytical work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it for you. And then uh, we're just going to talk about a few different spots, just a couple of different measures here and there. Now, you'll notice that I'm playing it pretty fast. And the reason that I'm playing it pretty fast is that Charlie Parker was known for his up-tempo playing. And his style works really well at a little bit of a faster tempo. So that's another thing that I want you to challenge yourself this week is try to push the tempo on this. I am going to include for the Patreon members a slower backing track and then a backing track that is the same tempo that I'm about to play here. So I really want you to push your technique Try to make your technique move to that next level because in order to play bebop, you have to be comfortable at those medium to medium fast to fast tempos. So this could also be a great opportunity for you to feel a little bit more comfortable playing faster than normal. Okay, so here's the etude, then we'll chat about a few things. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed that etude. Let's just talk about a few spots, a few spots that really stand out to me. So the first one is going to be measure eight. And what I'm really trying to demonstrate in measure eight is how we can use rhythm to really make a phrase as interesting as possible. So we've got this short two, five, one cadence that goes to the key of D flat, which is the four in this case. And what I've done is I've tried to really strive to use some, some interesting rhythmic variation. So you'll see on beat one measure eight, I have an eighth note triplet, follow that up by two eighth notes, and then I play four sixteenth notes, and then follow that up by two eighth notes. Now what you'll also notice in this measure, it's kind of a little microcosm of everything that we've been talking about this month. Because not only do I have the rhythmic interest happening, 
But I also start the measure by arpeggiating a chord, so really highlighting that vertical playing. And then the rest of the measure is a little bit more of that horizontal playing where I'm, I'm more thinking about the scale and using my whole step and half step relationships to play the end of the measure. So I've got a little bit of a difference there. And then at the end of the line, we also see the first concept we talked about this month, which is I resolve this by using a half step. So if you look at the and of four in measure eight going into the downbeat of measure nine, I am resolving that by way of a half step. So I really like this measure because it really shows everything that we've been talking about this month. So really get into and analyze that measure, measure eight. So the other measure that I wanna talk about doesn't seem like a very interesting measure, but it does contain one concept that I think is really essential to getting this sound. So we're gonna look at measure 24. So on the surface, you look at it and you go, yeah, okay, it's just eight eighth notes, right? But I think that that concept of the vertical combined with the horizontal playing, which is one of my favorite concepts to study and really make sure that I have in my playing, is on full display in that measure. So if you notice at the beginning of the measure, I'm using that horizontal playing, starting on the seventh of the chord that's happening there, going right down the scale for the first half of the measure to the third. And then on beat three, when I reach that third, I'm arpeggiating. I'm going three, five, seven, flat nine, and then resolving that to the fifth of the next chord on the downbeat. So while that looks like a very pedestrian measure, I think that if you can work some of this stuff into your playing, that's really going to make a huge difference. And the combination of vertical and horizontal is one of the most difficult things to really grasp as a concept and put into your playing. So I really want you to work on that. And another thing that this measure kind of shows us is that even if a measure doesn't appear to be anything super exciting, I still want you to analyze it. I still want you to think about basically every single measure in this etude and really give it attention. Because if you skip over a measure simply because it doesn't look like anything really interesting is happening there, uh, you might miss out on something really cool that's happening that you want to transfer into your own playing or a concept that you may want to study that ultimately becomes a really important part of your conception, a part of your playing. All right. So really take your time with this. Really make sure that you are looking at this closely and thinking about every single measure, figuring out what's going on and trying to get the most benefit out of this etude that you can. All right. I would love to hear you playing the etude. So if you want to record yourself and put it in the 10 minute jazz lesson community Facebook group, I would absolutely love that. We've been having a ton of people doing all the homework this week and posting what they've written, what they've come up with. And that's been just awesome to see that people are out there actually doing the work. So if you're one of those people, post it post it. There's a lot of really supportive people over there and you're going to get a lot of guidance and help in that group. So again, that's the 10 minute jazz lesson community Facebook group. Now also remember if you want to support the show and get the copies of this etude, we have it in concerts, B flat, E flat, and bass clef. So you want to get your hands on that, go over to 10minutejazzlesson.com, click on one of the Patreon banners, and you will find all of the options for membership over there. Thank you to everybody that supports us. We've got well over 300 people over there that get those benefits each and every week. And I am very grateful to all of you for keeping this show going. All right, I've had fun this month really looking at this and um, I hope it has benefited you. It seems like it's spurred a lot of people to take a little bit of a closer look at the playing of Charlie Parker and that is what we're after. So I'm gonna close the episode by playing the etude one more time for you. I hope you all have a great weekend, are staying safe and healthy out there, and we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Talk to you soon, everybody. Bye.